Hey, what's up everybody? It's Matt coming back at you with another photography tutorial. Today I want to try to show you how to get out of automatic and into manual mode in order to take better pictures. Regardless of what camera you're using, whether it's a DSLR, a point and shoot, or even sometimes your phone nowadays, um, you should be able to access manual mode and have control over some of the settings that I'm going to be talking about. If you want to be a serious photographer and get better at taking photos, it's really important to know how to operate and shoot in manual mode. Um, super important to know what each setting that I'm going to talk about is and does. But it's not always completely necessary to shoot in manual mode and I actually don't recommend it unless you have complete control over the lighting or you're in a situation where the lighting is super consistent. In certain situations, shooting in manual mode can be kind of inefficient, um, especially when the light is just changing way too much. Um, you know, you might miss a shot just because you're not in the right setting. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about that towards the end of the video. So I know how it is when you get a new camera or you just want to learn how to take better pictures. Some of the concepts seem difficult to learn or complicated or something. So I'm going to try to simplify it as much as I can. Um, I have some paper cutout visual aid type things to kind of help you visualize what I'm talking about. And I'll also show you around my camera a little bit as I talk about each, each setting. Um, I'm using a Canon 6D. This is my camera. It's a full frame DSLR. Um, I have a Canon 50mm 1.8 STM mounted on here. Hopefully by the end of the video you'll know what 1.8 means. Um, but yeah, this is my camera. Love it. Highly recommend it. Um, you know, once you get to a level where you kind of want to upgrade, um, this is a great camera. Not sponsored by Canon, by the way. I wish it were though. Canon hit me up. So before we really get into it, I just want to explain the concept of exposure real quick. Exposure essentially is the amount of light that your camera is being exposed to or the amount of light that your camera is taking in, basically. That is pretty much the foundation of photography. Um, so how you gauge exposure is by this meter here. This is called an exposure meter. Um, most cameras will have it and it's just basically a straight line with some numbers on it right there in the middle You'll see the line with the zero and as you move to the right You'll have positive one two and three as you move to the left You have negative one two and three that center zero is perfect Basically, you're perfectly exposed just the right amount of light is entering the camera your photo is gonna look on point Anywhere to the right and you're gonna be overexposed and anywhere to the left of that zero You're gonna be underexposed now each one of those numbers are called stops So if you're at the two then you're two stops overexposed uh, and vice versa. So that's basically exposure in a nutshell um, And I say perfectly exposed is in the center, but really it's up to you. It's personal preference. I'll sometimes underexpose um, just a little bit or I'll overexpose just a little bit depending on how I want the photo to look and what I want to do in post So a lot of times you hear photographers say that you want to be perfectly exposed every time But really it's up to you how you want to expose your photo Just don't go too far left or too far right because then your photo is a lost cause All right, so there's three elements of shooting in manual mode ISO Aperture and shutter speed. So if you think of these elements as a triangle you want your photo to land somewhere in the middle and of course that would be the zero on the exposure meter. All right, so that first element I mentioned, ISO or ISO, essentially is your camera sensitivity to light. And of course I am simplifying that quite a bit, but essentially basically that's what it is. Um, and it's usually represented by whole numbers from 100 up to, depending on what type of camera you have, 25,600 plus. And how ISO works, a larger number means that your camera is gonna be more sensitive to light whereas a lower number is going to mean that your camera is going to be a lot less sensitive to light. So for this example, let's assume that we have an equal amount of light. And here's our exposure meter, and then I'll show you a photo at different levels of ISO so you can kind of see how it affects the photo. So the first photo is going to be perfectly exposed right in the middle at zero, and it was shot at ISO 320. Now the next photo was shot at ISO 640, and it is one stop overexposed. So again, that larger number equated to more sensitivity to light, which in turn produced a brighter photo. Next photo was shot at ISO 160, so a lower ISO, less sensitive to light. It's a darker photo, it's underexposed by one stop. So if you're in a darker situation, you're obviously gonna wanna use a higher ISO, um, just because there's not gonna be as much light present, so you want your camera to be really sensitive to the light so it can use it to brighten up the image as much as possible. One thing you wanna be careful with if you're shooting in a really dark place, um, like at night or in a super dark room where there's not a lot of light, you don't want to push your ISO too, too high 
um, because the higher you go, the uh, more noise that becomes present. Noise is basically just this grainy, nasty ugliness that appears in photos with high ISOs. Um, and I'll show you an example of that and I'll zoom into it so you can really see what it looks like. So the next element I'm gonna talk about is aperture. Um, basically what aperture is, is the size of the hole that your camera is capturing light through. And the aperture is represented here by this f1.8. Um, depending on what camera you're using, it may start at 3.5 or 4.0 or 6.3 or something like that. It goes all the way up to f22. It's kind of weird how aperture works. A uh, smaller number equals a larger hole. Um, or a wider aperture and a large number equals a smaller hole or a more narrow aperture. So like I mentioned before, this is a 50 millimeter 1.8. Um, so the aperture is 1.8, which means that it's a pretty wide, um, pretty large hole basically. So when you have a larger aperture such as f1.8, you're gonna be able to capture a lot more light. So when we do side by side, you can see that f1.8 is a lot bigger than the f11 and therefore you're gonna be able to capture a lot more light with the f1.8 than you would be able to at f11. So that'll be good in low light situations um, where there's not a lot of light present, you'll be able to capture as much light as possible. In turn, if there's too much light present, you stop up to f11 and you won't have to capture as much light. Another thing that aperture controls is bokeh or background blur. Whenever you see photos where like for instance, a uh, portrait where the person is in focus and everything behind is really blurry, that's bokeh and that is controlled by your aperture. The larger your aperture or the smaller the number, um, the more bokeh you're going to be able to produce. I'll show you some photo examples here. Um, this was shot at f1.8. You can see um, you know, the bear is completely in focus and the background is all blurred out. Everything is blurry, the lights are blurry and everything. Um, that's how you get that effect. And then I stopped it up to f11, I believe. Um, again, the settings will be on the screen. And you can see a lot more detail in the background. It's not as blurry. That's basically how you get that nice creamy bokeh or background blur by having a lens with a large aperture. So the last element I'm gonna talk about is shutter speed, which basically is how quickly your camera's shutter opens and closes. Another way you can think about it is the amount of time that your camera has to capture light. Um, it's represented by this number here that looks like a fraction. So this is one one thousandth of a second. That means your camera has one one thousandth of a second where the shutter is open. And down here you have one one hundred and sixtieth of a second, which is obviously going to be a lot slower. And therefore your shutter is going to be open longer and be able to capture more light than at one one thousandth of a second. So to demonstrate this, first up we have one one hundred and sixtieth of a second. So you're gonna take the photo, the shutter's gonna open, it's gonna stay open for that amount of time, and then it's gonna close, and that's gonna be your photo, and you were obviously able to capture a pretty decent amount of light. Down the spectrum, we have one one thousandth of a second. So what's gonna happen here is your shutter's gonna open, capture some light, and then close back really quickly. So you can see that you didn't, you know, your camera didn't have a lot of time to capture more light. So basically what this means for your photo is if you're in a situation where there's not a lot of light present, you're gonna be able to use a slower shutter speed um, and have more time to capture as much light as you possibly can. If you're in a situation outdoors, for instance, you might wanna use a quicker shutter speed like one one thousandth of a second or one five hundredth of a second because um, you don't want to capture as much light, so you want your shutter to, to open and close pretty quickly. Another aspect of shutter speed is the amount of motion um, that you capture. So when you're down at 1 160th of a second, and I'll show you a photo of this, I think I was down at something ridiculous, like 1 25th of a second or something. Um, you can see that since the shutter was open for that amount of time, it captured all my hand movement and everything, so um, the photo came out blurry. On the other hand, if you were shooting sports, where people are moving you know, quickly, um, you'd wanna be up at like one 1,000th one of a second so that the shutter opens and closes quickly and just kind of freezes that motion um, you know, and makes them appear still so you don't really have to deal with as much blur. But again, you'll need enough light to be able to make that happen. So hopefully now you kind of have a better understanding of how ISO, aperture, and shutter speed kind of work independently and how they can work together in various situations to produce the type of photo you want. Um, go back and look at the examples, you know, where I'm showing you what the ISO or aperture or shutter speed does. Um, and notice the other settings and kind of try to reason with yourself and see if you can figure out, you know, why the settings are set that way. I said at the beginning of the video, it's not always the most efficient thing to shoot in manual mode because, you know, you can kind of see that you have to set each individual setting 
you know, based on the lighting in order to capture the photo. So if you're in a situation where you just need to shoot something real quick or, you know, you want to take a picture of something that might disappear in, in a second or something, you know, you don't want to have to take the time to set each individual parameter. So what I recommend is that you shoot in aperture priority mode, um, which most cameras should have. Um, and it's usually represented by this AV. Basically what you do in aperture priority mode is you set the aperture that you want to shoot at. So say you want to walk around and shoot at 2.8 and then you can also set your ISO. So say you want, to, you want your ISO to be set at 160, you don't want a lot of grain. Um, your camera is then going to decide at what shutter speed um, you need to shoot at in order to get that perfect exposure. So it'll select that for you. Um, so it's just a much more efficient way of shooting. Um, you know, you get to select your parameters so that you kind of get the look you're going for um, and then you kind of just don't have to worry about having the right shutter speed or having to set your ISO because it's going to be at a perfect um, exposure every single time. So that's just a much more efficient way to shoot. This way you don't miss out on that photo that you don't have a lot of time to take. And then you can kind of go back and see, um, you know, at what shutter speed your camera decided was best to shoot at. And then you have a better idea of what your settings should be if you're ever in another situation like that and you're shooting in manual mode. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, just feel free to drop a comment. I'll do my best to get back to you. If there's any other videos you want me to make as far as photography, uh, you know, feel free to leave suggestions. I have some other plans for f some tutorials and some editing things, but of course I want to show you guys what you want to see. So um, let me know. And as always, I truly appreciate you watching. Shout out everybody who subscribed to the channel. Please continue to do so. Continue to like and share. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter. All that stuff is in the description below. Check out my photography website and stay tuned for the next video.